Hey guys, welcome to the 14. I'm Nick Cole, and we're breaking down all of the SEC football games in week eight from a betting perspective. Today, we're talking about the South Carolina Gamecocks visiting the Texas A&M Aggies on Saturday night at Kyle Field. This game is going to be played at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, which is 6.30 local, and the game will be televised on the SEC network. From a betting perspective, this game opened with Texas A&M as a 19-point favorite, and it's moved slightly as the Aggies are a 19-and-a-half-point favorite as of this recording. The over-under opened at 48 and a half and has dropped to 45. Bring in our betting analyst, Christopher Smith. Christopher, what do you make of this uh, SEC East-West uh, matchup here? Yeah, well, I guess not you, Nick, but some of the viewers, if you didn't believe me when I said before the season that South Carolina is not really an SEC roster this year, and you didn't believe me after, you know, some, some of the fans didn't believe me after they practically carried off Shane Beamer on their shoulders when they beat East Carolina and celebrated like they won the Super Bowl. Well, maybe you believe me now when they needed a, a touchdown in the last minute to, to beat Vanderbilt last week. So um, it'll be uh, a no contest year. But thankfully, um, for those of us who are betting on this game, we have something to cheer for. So uh, why don't you break down the, the weather injuries and, and the news and notes, Nick? Sure. So let's start with the weather. Uh, Saturday night in uh, College Station is going to be temperature in the 70s. Obviously, we're going to drop a few degrees as the evening goes on. Got about a 10-mile-an-hour wind, which is right on the edge of something you should be monitoring or concerned about, and there's no rain in the forecast. Uh, from an injury standpoint, let's start with South Carolina as their list is pretty hefty. Actually, both teams have their fair share of injuries this season, but we'll start with the, the headline, and that's that Gamecocks starting quarterback Luke Doty is now out for the season. Uh, and they're going to turn things back over to the former graduate assistant, Zeb Nolan. Actually, the guy that came in and, and led them back to that win against Vanderbilt started the first couple games of the season as Doty was dealing with another injury. Uh, and so now it's just going to be a Nolan show for the rest of Shane Beamer's first year here in Columbia. Uh, the rest of them, uh, you know, you run down the list here. I, I've got about 20 deep uh, on, on guys that we should be looking at. Uh, Kevin Harris, the running back for the Gamecocks, is probable. Uh, for this game, probably one of the more important names to look at. Uh, and then over on the Texas A&M side of things, uh, defensive tackle Jaden Peavy, who uh, has the best or the second best season long grade on that defensive uh, front there, according to Pro Football Focus, missed the Missouri game last week. So you need to watch to see if they are going to be able to insert him back in the lineup this week. And the wide receiver Caleb Chapman should play for the first time since he got injured all the way back in week two. So they've been without him for several weeks now. Uh, news and notes wise, let's, let's start with Texas A&M and just say, you know, there were some questions, I guess, about this team a month ago where they were at the quarterback play with Haynes King being injured and Zach Calzada sort of trying to learn on the fly as the season goes along. And then, you know, you have a couple of conference losses, everybody gets a little bit down and out of nowhere, they beat Alabama in week six. And the question going into week seven was, how does this team respond? Very emotional win, very unexpected win from, you know, a betting and just an observer standpoint. How are they going to perform on the road at Mizzou? And the answer was pretty well. And they, they beat Mizzou in week seven, 35 to 14. Uh, and, and then, you know, they took advantage of what we know to be a very flawed Missouri defense, especially against the run. Uh, the Aggies ran for 283 yards and three touchdowns and ripped it off for, I think, 6.7 yards per carry in that game. But, but perhaps more importantly, we saw the Texas A&M defense turn in another solid performance against a Mizzou offense that is actually pretty decent. And then on the South Carolina side, you've already kind of mentioned it, but man, they were very, very lucky to beat Vanderbilt at home last week, which should sort of concern you. And they found themselves down late. And really, you could point to Vanderbilt and say Vanderbilt gave South Carolina an opportunity to even come back and win this game by some conservative play calling in the final minutes of that game where they could have put a touchdown on the board to put South Carolina out of reach. So got to consider yourselves lucky. Uh, if, if you're looking for, you know, a glass half full to this is that they did find a way to come back and win that game. And when Nolan did come in in that game late, uh, he picked apart the – Doors defense on that touchdown drive for several chunk plays uh, that helped them avoid what would have been a pretty embarrassing loss. And then last thing I'll mention before I kick it over to you, uh, this series is actually an annual series for people who don't know. They're, they're East-West opponents. They've been playing each other every year since 2014, and AM has won every game so far. They're 7-0 in this series against South Carolina. 
And in the last two seasons, they've outscored the Gamecocks 78 to nine in those two matchups. So Christopher, you like to point out that you don't think South Carolina is very good. We're seeing Texas A&M improve as the season goes along. We see the history of the recent games between these two teams. How do we throw all that into a pot and make some money off betting on this game? Yeah, I don't think people are, let me rephrase that. I, I think some people are still sort of sleeping on just how bad this South Carolina offense is. I mean, there's, there's no shame in scoring 13 points against Georgia. We all know everyone struggles this year to score against Georgia, but look at the bad FBS defenses that South Carolina has faced. I mean, East Carolina is 100 in SP plus on defense. Vanderbilt is 108. Just against those two teams, South Carolina had 29 possessions and they scored 33 points. We're talking one, almost barely one point per possession against teams that are in the bottom 20 in all of uh, FBS on defense. And I mean, they've scored between 10 and 23 points against every FBS team that they faced. Well, Texas A&M's defense is the second best, easily the second best outside of Georgia that they faced and will face all season. And just looking at some of the advanced stats, and South Carolina is 124th in EPA per rush. The offensive line is 122nd in line yards. They're 114th in stuff rate. They're 113th in passing down sack rate. So how can South Carolina move the ball at all? I mean, this is a team that their leading rusher against Georgia, Kentucky, and Troy had 31, 38, and 49 yards, the leading rusher on the whole team. And I guess you have two options. Uh, I guess the good thing, if you're South Carolina, is that I don't downgrade their power ratings when they're going uh, from Doty to Noland. I don't think it makes a difference for this team right now. But basically, you have two options. Number one, somehow you protect Noland well enough to hit try to hit some explosive passing plays. Now, Texas A&M is very good at rushing the passer, and South Carolina is very bad at protecting the passer, and no one is nowhere near as mobile as Doty is, so good luck with that. The only other option I can see for South Carolina really scoring points is Texas A&M heading into the bye week, maybe with the game out of, out of reach or already decided in the second half, maybe Jimbo relaxes the team a little bit and South Carolina can score that way, but this is the second South Carolina SEC road game in three weeks, and they have not yet had a bye week. They are maybe the thinnest team in the SEC. You already mentioned the injuries. And when I say thinnest, I, I still think they have a better roster than Vanderbilt and maybe a better roster in, in spots or at least talent-wise than Missouri. But I think they're thinner. The drop-off between their starters and their backups I think is even bigger than it is at Vanderbilt or Missouri. So now you have a tired team that hasn't had a bye week yet. That's on the road again, that just lost its, its starting quarterback. Um, not, not good. Not a great situation for South Carolina to be in. So Nick, who are you betting in this game and, and what are you taking on the total? Yeah. So let's we'll start with the side. I actually really like Texas a and to win this game pretty big. So give me the Aggies minus 19 and a half. The side, the thing I'm less sure about, is the total in this game. 45 is a tough one for me. Um, I, like you said, I don't anticipate that South Carolina has to score many points in this game, but I also think that an A&M offense that seems to be running much better in the last couple of weeks could flirt with getting to near that total all on the, all on their, by themselves. So I'm going to take over 45 for the purposes of making picks here, but I don't know that I'm putting any real money on that. How about you? Yeah, I think if I um, if you're out there and you have a sports book that one lets you bet on team totals, or two lets you bet on first half team totals, even better, or at least lets you bet on a team total live in the game. Um, personally, my favorite out of any of the bets would be a first half team total under on South Carolina. Um, so if you get a chance at your at any sports book you have available to you to take that, then that's the one I would take. But for our purposes, I'll also take Texas A&M minus 19 and a half. I've already explained why. And I'll take the under 45 just because I don't think Jimbo Fisher is that interested in um, running up the score or playing fast in the second half of the scheme. And I could see South Carolina struggling to get to double digit points. So 
For Nick Cole, I'm Christopher Smith for the 14, and we'll talk to you next week.